Yo, Jenny Blaze is back. I took last week off from recording, but I am back for the second half of season two, and I am ready to kick some podcasting butt. Since the break, I've added some new things to my background, one of them being this amazing rolling tray made by Glittery Hippie. I'll put all the links in my episode description, but as you can see, there is a be cool, don't be all like uncool sticker in here. That actually is from my shop, Bravo and Blaze, and Glittery Hippie and I did a collab together. These are all custom rolling trays for your weed. Um, If you are looking to get one, you can reach out to myself or Glittery Hippie on Instagram. You can go ahead and DM her. Her shop is currently on a break, but she's taking pre-orders until May 15th. So get your orders in now. These are custom made. And if you don't want the Luann sticker, I can always make you something else. Look at that. I'm going to put it right up here. Right next to, hi, baby gorgeous. Here is today's can of mom story. I had to explain to my son why I use a bong as opposed to a vape pen. And it was a very important moment because I had to set boundaries while still giving him the space to tell me what he was feeling. I validated his feelings, but also explained why bongs and the word stoner has such a stigma attached to it. It was a moment I wish I had captured because it was real and raw from anonymous. My parenting philosophy is to talk to your kids, whether it's about sex, gender, religion, current events, social injustice, or weed, especially weed or alcohol, anything. And it's not only to have a good relationship with your child, but to help guide them so that they can make healthy and confident decisions on their own when they become adults just my two cents. My guest today is one of my Bravo besties, Ricky from That Bravo Gay. We're going to go through the whole Bravo lineup, give a recap, and we're going to talk about some other things that have been going on in pop culture, like a few trials going on between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, but also the Kardashians and Black China. There's also some other uh, new shows that have come out on Netflix and Hulu. So we'll be talking about those as well. Hey, baby gorgeous. Welcome to Bravo and Blaze, where we're going to get lit off all the latest happenings going on in the Bravo TV world. This is a safe and uncensored space to discuss our love for everything 420. So grab your can of goodies and let's get lit. I was really hoping that I would get the um, bedazzled one. But. I mean, it feels like it's very, like it feels like an ice sculpture, right? Ice queen. It's very like Salt Lake City. I know. It feels like the bottle's like so sharp and flat that you can almost like cut your face on it. <sighs> Slice <laughs> my eye. Um. The bottle's yeah. like as chiseled as like Lisa's jawline and everything. She's like, I base this off my, <laughs> I can't do a Lisa Barlow voice. Can you try? It's really hard. Cause it's like, it's sort of low, know, yeah. but you have to like, sort of seem like you're really into it. Yeah, Like it's almost a little bit like Valley girl, but not exactly. Exactly. You kind of like, <laughs> drag some words out jenny yeah i can't do it i need to practice it's hard i, I can do whitney rose <laughs> she's like i love that Hi, you, baby. you think that you're better than me <laughs> i like when lisa imitates whitney <laughs> yeah i do too the best. what about um jen shaw i guess if you just start screaming Meredith will sound like Meredith after the show is done. 
with our drinks. She always sort of sounds like this. Do not bring up my family. What the fuck <laughs> doesn't, doesn't add, add up? up? What doesn't? Wait, what did she say? What fucking doesn't add up? <laughs> I was it. thinking more like the slurs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh man, who else? Mary Cosby saying negative and malicious things about my family. Repugnant. Repugnant. Like it, there is like a certain amount of like nasally. Yeah. To it. Maybe she does a lot of cocaine or used to. Yeah, that's probably what it is. That's why Erica Jane sounds the way she does. <gasps> you think so? Probably. Do you think she does coke actively now or just? like recreationally or like a habit. I need I to mean, know what level of abuse we're at. If this is getting aired, then it's all alleged, but probably currently. I think more so currently because her life is in shambles. Yeah. I mean, you got to keep on going somehow. <laughs> yeah. Like rip a rail for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I probably won't put that or leave that in that'll start a war hey i mean that that worked out for brands by bravo she went to fight erica on instagram and now she has thirty five thousand followers that's what happened yeah no way it's like the story ended up getting like featured on different like news sites and stuff like that because they were fighting yeah online yeah because erica reshow reshared one of her posts and someone said like you need to credit brands by bravo oh that thing i didn't yeah. know that was brand- oh, okay yeah <laughs> and she's like why it's my picture or something yeah like she's that. like this it's picture not- belongs to paramount plus and yeah. bravo <laughs> the photo credit is kyle richards so she does know a little bit about the law was that no. before the accusations had to have been during no well questionable well they were still okay. together at least when that happened because that's when lisa and erica were wearing the same outfit at erica's house <laughs> that pink one yeah when tom was there yeah oh boy yeah the sequence of events is a little hazy but i'm gonna open this bottle of vita that i've recently acquired it's so gorgeous Hello, baby baby gorgeous. gorgeous. Hi. Wait. Okay. So should I try it on the rocks first? Because I got this fancy ice cube. Oh, I let it melt a little bit too long. Well, they're not as fancy as Heather's ice cubes, but that is a fancy ice cube. They're not hexagonal, but not this ice cube, but I have another ice cube mold with my husband's monogram in it. I thought you were going to say my husband in the shape of like, <laughs> I don't know why. Sometimes the stuff that you say to me, like, it just doesn't surprise me. Wait, you thought I was going to say that I had like a ice An cube. Ice, ice mold ice of, yeah. Penis? Yeah. <laughs> Sort of like a, you know, it's sort of like a corksicle sort of situation. Wait, what corksicle? Is that a, oh my gosh. Have you never heard of a corksicle? It's like you, it's like a tube of like a thing that you can put in the freezer. It's like a tube and you can put it like down in your wine bottle and stuff like that to like keep your drink cold. Yeah. Wait, do people use that for other things, for sexual things? I mean, probably. (laughs) I mean, Brittany from Below Deck Down Under has a like stone. Brittini. It's Brittini. Brittini. <laughs> um, she has that stone dildo. Oh, yeah, didn't we comment on it? We left a funny comment. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> yeah, something about getting pegged. <laughs> Pegging is like so on brand for us. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> would you call it getting stoned? Ooh. <laughs> Okay, should I measure out my tequila? My Vita tequila? Yeah. 
So what are you going to make this with your Vita tequila? Glass, um, well, I was told or recommended to drink it on the rocks or with grapefruit soda with a splash of lime. And I don't have grapefruit soda, but I have grapefruit and club soda and a lime. So I was going to try it on the rocks first and then add in the stuff. Do it. I just dump it. Should I measure it? Okay. I'm not measuring it. That's for lamos. <gasps> <laughs> oh that's tequila do you want to tell me when to stop should i let you decide or i'll do it <laughs> um keep going okay that's too much that's like some asmr when you hear like alcohol <laughs> coming out of a bottle <laughs> okay and this is gonna live right here my baby gorgeous it looks right good right Ray. Yeah, it, it does, does look, look good. good. That is a nice bottle. Okay. Are you, do you have a cocktail? I do. I'm drinking the Mary Saul special Tito's and, uh, and lemonade. Is that a cocky? It's a cocky. So that's what a cocky is? Yes. Yeah, that's what she was drinking at the reunion, at least. I did not know that was a cocky. Cheers. Cheers. Clink. to heal out for sure that's pretty good yeah i mean i don't really drink tequila at all. <laughs> you but, know i mean mostly from margaritas for me i don't really i don't keep tequila around the house i don't make margaritas at my house very often but well, i don't really actually, drink tequila i used to drink um patron in my like real wild montauk days like lindsey hubbard did not make up Lindsay Hubbard. <laughs> <laughs> like there was a picture of Lindsay Hubbard on the stage at, I forgot the name of it, this place that a bar in Montauk. And I was like, oh my God, I remember waking up with bruises on my hands because I was on stage with a tambourine, like beating the hell out of my hands. Oh <laughs> my like, gosh. <laughs> like for hours. <laughs> So I was like, oh my God, I remember that place. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking about that. Okay, so this is good. I think I'm drunk already, but I'm going to um, add some grapefruit. Oh, should I do a lot? I like a lot of. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if it was like going to be like grape juice, so club soda or grapefruit fruit yeah. soda, then yeah, you'll want a lot. Okay. Look, I got this too. Fancy. I feel like I'm moving really, really slow, but I don't know if that's because I just smoked. Well, I mean, sometimes like when you're like making a drink for the first time, it's like when you're like having to like, you're over here squeezing fruit for the audience at home. Like she's squeezing <laughs> grapefruit. She's squeezing limes. Like, yeah. And my laptop is here. There's like electronics. I'm scared. <laughs> All right, here we go. Cheers. Grapefruit, lime, and club soda. Vita tequila. Oh, that's really good. Nice and fresh. I think that's more my speed. I don't know if I could do on the rocks. Okay. Let me put this over here. All right. Are you excited? I'm so excited. It's been a while I, since I've been here. This is a big week because BravoCon was announced. I know. I have been waiting for this moment. And now <laughs> we're just waiting for tickets to go on sale. I know. And it's stressing me out so bad. Like, I'm so excited and so happy, but like too much to the point where I'm like, I cannot miss this. And the FOMO is hurting me. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm already having fear of missing out without even having the opportunity to miss out. Right? Oh my gosh. It's like torture. I just know that the tickets are going to go on sale when I'm in like a work meeting or I'm taking an, a, a random nap, which I never do, but that'll be the day. <laughs> I know. So you think you're going to try to go to BravoCon? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm not going to try. I'm going. I just don't know if I'm actually going to have a ticket or not. 
but yeah. I will be there regardless. I'm coming. I'm going to be there with you, even if yeah. I don't have a ticket. We're just going to. Yeah, if we don't have a ticket, we should just um, get megaphones. Yeah. <laughs> and just sing like Money Can't Buy You Class and Coffee and Love and Feel the Rush. I plan on choreographing some dance moves to each of those housewife songs. Are you going to do the OC Reels too? I know it's your favorite. I should. I have to be prepared because what if the OC Reels make an appearance and put on a show, then we will be so mad if we don't come up with a dance. Yeah. I do feel sort of feel like people at BravoCon might riot if they have the OC Reels up there performing that. Riot in a good way or a bad way? Bad way. <laughs> also, hopefully we don't have um, Noella there. So uh, I'm manifesting that for us. I think she's going to be there. But... What sort of big things do you think might come out at BravoCon this year? Because they were, they unveiled the Salt Lake Housewives. Yeah, what are, they're going to um, have a new show? I don't know. What do you think? I think something Roni. Yeah, if they better have a Roni decision by then. If not, they better announce it by then or else there will be a riot yeah well i mean i feel like with that they're gonna have to have made have an announcement to. yeah because, we're gonna be in new york city yeah and the roni women are gonna be there yeah i, I think so even like the older ones like literally like they can't go be have it without dorinda because everyone would literally be like what are we doing here without dorinda <laughs> like if i if dorinda's not at bravo con i want my money back yeah well dorinda has to be there she's gonna be on ultimate girls trip so true she is that show that show is being held (laughs) the show is being filmed at blue stone manor so it also wouldn't surprise me if we did get some sort of an announcement about the future of like vanderpump rules yeah i was thinking that too or shaw's oh yeah well i still think that shaw's and vanderpump rules should combine like that'd be pretty OGs, fun. almost like an all-star cast yeah <laughs> i don't know i can because see it. there's beef with lala and Gigi right now uh that would be that would almost be too toxic for tv it those two be. those two can like take it so far they probably would yeah and then throw randall in the mix <laughs> yikes that's a show that's yeah that, a that's show. that's a show for sure <laughs> We, oh my gosh, Bravo should just hire us. Anyways, um, what else? Have, anything else with BravoCon? I'm just really excited and scared. Yeah. I just like, I feel like it's going to be so wild. I can't imagine people aren't going to be dying to run up on stage or like run up to a Bravo lab and like just hug them or whatever. So I don't know. This is going to be wild. What if someone gets up and like Will Smith's one of the housewives? Well, yeah, that could happen. (laughs) Someone's going to do that to Noelle if she's up there. Oh my God. Can you imagine? Oh my gosh. She'd speak in a whisper for the rest of the weekend. (laughs) (laughs) That Jennifer... (laughs) Uh, she tagged me in a picture it's just one of the weirdest things to like get in a fight with someone about i know she's so bizarre but um did you watch karen's grand dom family reunion yeah i loved it is it over now was it just two parts i think so i have to be honest but it was was good I thought it was good. I was like, I was doing laundry. So I was, I didn't watch every single part of it, but I thought it might've it been good. as long as it needed to be, but I liked it. I love Karen. Her family's really funny. Oh yeah. I love, uh, the nephew, David. Yes. David. Yeah. She basically told me to shut the hell up and mind my business. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, I her, like da- her daughter Raven is really funny too. 
Yeah, I heard that the sh- the reunion sets the stage for what's going to happen in Potomac. But I don't know if that was just Karen saying that and just, you know, she says whatever she wants. <laughs> That's probably true. I mean, it's a hot box, sing, sing. Yeah, she's you like, I don't examples. know, it sounded good though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have no idea what it meant, but. <laughs> I love that. Actually, Gamble from Real Housewives of Melbourne, she did something like that where she was like, I just made something up because I was so angry. <laughs> Yeah. I loved it. I was like, okay, at least she admitted it. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing about the Melbourne housewives is they're to an extent pretty honest about what they do. They're just like, yeah, I did it. <laughs> and what? What are you going to do about it? Yeah. That's Dolores. Um, yeah. So I think it's over. What's going to take its place? Do you know? Atlanta. Atlanta's starting. Yeah. Is that going to be at eight o'clock or nine o'clock? I hope it's on at eight. Because I can't do those. Things, yeah, I can't do 10 o'clock. They have to do eight o'clock. I mean, it's their Well, I guess I was saying I hope it's eight o'clock my time, but for you, that would be nine. No, Candy and the Gang is on at nine. Okay. So it comes on at eight my time. So that means Atlanta will be on at seven. I'm oh. an hour behind you. Yeah, I know. I keep forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so yeah, I hope it's on at seven for you. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Because I hate, like, what I hated was when they had shows that were on, like, what would be like 10 p.m. for you. Yeah. Real Housewives like, of Salt Lake City, being a fan for the first season was very difficult for me. Yeah, because it was like, why is this on so late? Even I think um, they would have a Watch What Happens Live after that, too. And I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> but yeah i i hope they have atlanta on early um so candy and the gang i um just had an interview with june ballard who is shandrika's fiance i really enjoyed our conversation i think he's a really great guy um and i hope that we see more of him in this season and also in a second season because they're getting married and on this week's episode, Patrick was saying that he's going to propose to Safari. So there could be a dueling wedding or wedding duel situation. <laughs> I I don't know if I want to see that. I mean, I, I actually, I, I do. you know, this is the first episode we really got to be introduced to June very much. And mm-hmm. I really like him. And it makes mm-hmm. me feel like him and Chandrika are like a pretty good couple and like, yeah stable and like you know he's obviously buying her nice gifts like a car but it feels like (laughs) it's almost like it well in the episode in our interview he mentions how when he first met Chandrika he had nothing so and that was only two years ago so he's built everything that he has now from the bottom in just two years and I think it's amazing that's incredible yeah I mean I don't think like it's not like he just graduated high school or dropped out of high school and like yeah. is where he is. He has prior experience in, you know, the music industry and stuff like that. So he had a starting point, but yeah, he's very impressive. I really enjoyed talking to him. Um, so that episode's going to come out soon, but before that one comes out, I have my episode with Dom unique coming out and it was kind of weird because he was, kind of talking a little bit of beef about Tom Unique. And I was like, oh my God, I love her. He's like, yeah, well. <laughs> she's she's one of my favorites. I love Tom Unique. Yeah, me too. I love her. I did really like when Brian had his funeral for the wig though. Oh my like, God. That I just is it. so, it felt so on brand for Brian. Oh my God, was it was so up. Good. I love, love, love that part. I love Brian too. I have an episode with him as well. And I know you do with Bravo Critics. Yeah. So check out Bravo Critics because we've got an interview with Brian too. Yeah. Okay. We have to talk about Below Deck Sailing Yacht. Oh my God. That show is just like, if you think that the episodes can't get crazier, like they do. I know. It's like so wild. I can't believe what we're watching. (laughs) 
<laughs> I just, I was very disturbed though by this week's episode because, well, I don't know if it's, okay. What are your thoughts on Ashley? <laughs> um, I don't really care for her. I, I mean, the, she has felt like she was so thirsty from the very beginning. Like she literally came onto that boat being like, I want to fuck Gary. And she has not tried to hide that fact like one day. And it's like, and then like, obviously like she's, she's seems like she's like super sexual. So she had to go and have sex with that other guy. Like in the meantime, like mm-hmm. not making any progress with Gary. So let me like take a little. I know side she stop has here. no shame at all. It's so bizarre to me. And it's been hard for me to watch having four daughters and being like, oh my God, I hope my daughters don't do this shit. And so like, that's been triggering but what she what happened oh no wait before even this episode this week I guess I Ashley started only fans on top of what we've been seeing it's like okay the thirst is real we know so I'm like oh lord here we go and I kind of ignored it but then some people send me stuff and so Turns out um, her OnlyFans pictures got out. They're all over Reddit and um, they're not good. (laughs) I I don't even care to to know. They could be considered illegal, I guess, in some places. (laughs) I don't know. Um, I just... So that happened and then we saw this week's episode and I was just like, I've had enough. Like Sonia Morgan, like I've reached, I've my, reached limit. my limit. I mean, it felt, I, the situation I think was not right. And it's sort of crazy to actually like think about like that happening to Gary. <laughs> It's so, okay. It's so Because he's usually this like womanizer and stuff. And now he's like actually sort of the victim in this situation. So, okay. So I think this is bad in so many ways. One, Ashley, she forced herself onto Gary. And I don't want to use the word that rhymes with grape, but it feels very violating with what she did her acts that we saw and I just it's so disturbing to me that she that that happened that also Gary was just like oh okay cool you know like his reaction which I kind of also understand because it's very like a very strange situation but then also why didn't Bravo do anything if that was a reverse the genders in this scenario yeah that would absolutely not be okay and so like if it were the girl passing out and he's like i'm just massaging you and then yeah he's he's like well it's already in like when she said that i like nearly fell out of my seat i know it's like what it just and then i guess people are fighting on facebook over this saying like no it was consensual or something I don't know like to me that I felt dirty after seeing that and just knowing that like no one has even talked about it watch what happens live he had uh Andy had who do you have on Captain Glenn and not Captain Glenn who did he have he had uh what's her name Gabby and somebody else Gabby and someone else and they didn't say anything about the Gary and Ashley thing yeah. Like, what the hell? This is another situation where I am having PTSD from when the stuff happened with Jenny on Salt Lake City and they weren't saying anything. And we're like, why are they doing this? Like, that's how I feel right now about this. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so like, gross. did someone at Bravo just not notice it? Because like, people don't think that that can happen to a guy. I think the production team and editing and whatever they knew what they were showing they purposely showed that so 
they there's no way that a human putting that together and editing that wasn't like hey guys this might ruffle some feathers over here like i it's hard for me to believe you know bravo's not aware like oh that one slipped by us you know what i mean yeah and like he was clearly very drunk because i don't think he would deny it if he actually yeah. remembered it he kept saying i don't remember i yeah. don't remember and he's that, like we didn't do that like i he, gary's the type that would normally be like yeah we banged yeah so that's why i don't know i didn't like it i don't know what's gonna happen this is I don't think we've had this situation where there's like pornographic videos of a cast member out there that she put out herself <laughs> during the airing of a show on Bravo. Yeah. This is like, why is this the way you want to go down in history? Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, there are a lot of people I feel like that. I mean, I feel like it, some of her actions feel very like Noella esque. Yeah, like damaged, right? Like, yeah, so there's something wrong. Because in one episode, she told Colin, I think, randomly was like, "Oh, my sister, no, we don't get along. She would fuck every single guy that I liked on purpose, and then come and tell me." Sounds like something she would do. I know, right? And it's like. Is she trying to get back at her sister? I almost want to get her sister on the show and be like, please explain what happened to you two. <laughs> what yeah. did your parents do to you? I'm 100%. Saying, oh my gosh. I'm this, uh, I'm just fearful as a mother to four yeah. daughters. Like it's not okay what Ashley did. And Gary is a man, but he was violated and he should, somebody should do something. There's like no justice. Yeah. Cause he's clearly been avoiding having sex with her the entire season. Yeah. Like he knows that she wants to fuck. <sighs> yeah. Well, that's what someone was like, oh, then why did he say, let's go have a massage or whatever? It's like, <sighs> I don't know. I can't, I can't get on. I can't even put myself on the other side to be like, oh no, it was okay. Cause to me, it was dead wrong. Yeah, I agree. But anyways, um, also on Monday, <laughs> Summer House was on, <laughs> moving on to the next topic. <laughs> Seamless transition here. Um, Summer House, let's see. Oh my gosh, Maya was so funny. She go, oh, you haven't really been watching, but Maya's- I'm, I'm behind. She's a new cast me and she um <laughs> she was kind of talking about Kyle because he was like banging his fists on the dinner table and she goes, Man, I can tell your parents never beat your ass. And I was almost dead. Like that was so funny to me because that dinner they were at, he was like drunk crying. And I'm sorry, but I just love when Kyle drunk cries. <laughs> I don't know why it like makes me laugh so hard and I'm not like laughing at him because I like him I, like I I just like I, I don't know he gets so emotional yeah he gets he turns into like a little kid and I think that's why I start laughing because it's like kind of cute in a way but um they had their prom which Lindsay Hubbard wore the same dress that Halle Berry wore to the Oscars I think when she won for shoot I forgot what movie but Lindsay Hubbard wore that same dress to her prom and then wore it again on the episode this week. And she looks better than when she- Yeah, she looks even better. Oh my gosh. She is just, I love Lindsay Hubbard. And her and Carl, they're like starting to like each other in this episode. And it was just like the cutest thing ever. I ship them so hard. I'm all about them. One other thing, you know, Paige and Craig, they're not my favorite. But one thing that was cute, Craig showed up and surprised um, Paige. And I did think that was kind of cute. That's gross. <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> I feel like with men like him, it's not just a surprise. It's like his way of like controlling because he wanted to like drop in and see what she was doing. Ooh, thank you for bringing me back down to earth. Yeah, come, come back. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not shipping any Craig and Paige over here. No, I'm I'm still not shipping them. But 
I did for a second. I was like, oh, that's cute. But yeah, I like your, your take on it better. <laughs> so what'd you think about Jersey? Was the finale? I don't really. Um, I mean, it, it was a good finale. I mean, it was a good episode. As far as the finale goes, it felt very weird for them to end it on the trip. Yeah. And it just felt very abrupt. And like, I know everyone's been asking this, but like, what's with the 13 episodes? Who's been asking that? Well, everyone's like, <laughs> why is the season sh- so short? 13 episodes is a pretty short season. They ha- Haven't they been having short seasons last couple of years? I don't know. If they are, I, I, I still want to know why. Yeah, I, I mean, know. like we watched Salt Lake City from September to March, <laughs> but like what we've only been time. watching New Jersey since like Christmas. Yeah, Jersey is definitely has been shorter. I and actually OC, when did OC start? I don't remember that, but that went on too long in my opinion. Like that, they needed to do more work on the show. Like even the reunion was a little bit lackluster. Ugh, reunion was boring. The best part of OC for the whole season was John yelling about Gina. I love, I, that. I love how like he totally flipped his mood. Shannon goes and tells him like, you know what Gina just said? She said that my, my life is pathetic or something like that. And he's like, <laughs> he's laughing at first. And he's like, fuck her. <laughs> fuck Gina. We're done. We're done with her. But to, to me, it almost felt Shannon like Shannon had to calm him down. That's the funny part when Shannon is a person calming someone else down. But it, like in my mind, it almost felt like he doesn't maybe normally act like that. But like he's like, okay, I've got to like this is gonna make Shannon feel better if I'm like one of the girls and like, yeah, fuck her, fuck Gina. <laughs> Wait, you really think he did it like that with that intent? I think that he knew that Shannon needed someone on her side, and like fuck her like he needed shannon needed someone to say fuck gina because no one else was gonna do it do you think he was maybe a little tipsy and he took it overboard a little bit i thought it was so great he was was like giving will smith energy yeah it just would have been funny if he just started yelling at her if he was like keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth (laughs) keep shannon storms bedore's name out of your motherfucking mouth. <laughs> oh my God. I would love that. You know what I noticed on the reunion? They didn't bring out any husbands, did they? No. Okay. I wonder if they did and cut it or like, they were just like, we're done. <laughs> I guess. Well, it's like, no one really wants to see Ryan. Was he even allowed to come? Jen probably would have been like, you need to stay at home. <laughs> And then, I mean, it would have just been Shane. I mean, I guess it depends if they bring the boyfriends out too. Like when Gina's man the, participated. Jax, Jax yeah. from Sons of Anarchy would show yeah. up. <laughs> the way my eyes rolled, like when they, when she said that, oh, I didn't know who that guy was, but like they showed the picture and I was like, I don't think so. Before ma'am. they showed the picture, I knew who she was, who Jax was. And I was like, Hell to the no, because I named my dog after Jax. Yeah, I <laughs> mean, of Sons of Anarchy. I don't like Noella, but she is really pretty. And I feel like, did she meet this guy on the Sugar Daddy website too? Because she could do a lot better than this guy. Oh my gosh, she just posted this week a bunch of cash <laughs> and was like, is my boyfriend a drug dealer? Ha ha ha. And somebody posted and was like, this is actually dangerous. And why are you doing this? It was like, she was trying to flex or something, but it was very like an inappropriate flex. Yeah. She's just so gross. Like everything about her just like creeps me out. She's weird. I, I really hope they don't bring her back. You're like stack of vaginas no thank you yeah hell no (laughs) my nightmare yeah it's a triple threat oh my gosh oh that's so great what about uh below deck down under you know i think that that show i think it's really good i think it's funny you know i 
the whole stripping thing is probably like one of the highlights for me because Culver is so funny. And like, I was watching that and I was like, was he part of like the magic Mike show at some point? Because yeah. like, he's like doing flips, like yeah. he's got some moves. Yeah. My husband is basically like that. Yeah. <laughs> His or smile he likes kills to me thank too. He's got such a big smile. Yeah, he does. He's like very all American boy. I feel like. Yeah. He's, for sure and he's all about like teamwork and like camaraderie he's like come on guys team spirit yeah i mean he seems like he's one of those guys that's always like down to do stuff that's like for the betterment of the team because yeah. like on like below deck down under sometimes they bitch about having to like oh we don't want to do the talent show but like culver would have been up like in yeah. two seconds yeah or like um that disco ball hat that the captain gives to the worst person yeah by the way i don't know if that's the best like team bonding it's exercise. essentially a dunce cap yeah it's a dunce <laughs> cap <laughs> like culver was like come on benny why aren't you wear it <laughs> he's like come on be part of the group or whatever it's just like culver it's just too much it's cute it's very cute benny kind of cracks me up though like i feel like he's he's always in like literally like a shitty situation but like he's always having, he's always one that has to deal with all the gross stuff like i would be pretty broken by then and having to deal with like squid and like i don't oh fucking think so gosh. he's just so i don't know he I don't know why he's there. He just really doesn't seem like he wants to be there. Yeah. The captain's like, come on, buddy. Culver's like, let's go. And even Sheffy's like, I really like Benny. I mean, the chef is like the main person I don't like, though. Oh he's well on his way out. I mean, have you, there's some sort of rumors, and I think it might, I don't know who's been Somebody has started. Fired. Somebody is that it. he's going to get fired but there was a rumor going around that like chef leon is coming back no. which would be like the wildest situation why would you ever. trade chefy for leon yeah i don't know i don't even really know. what's his name ryan chef ryan, chef ryan i just yeah. like calling him chefy because that's what aisha says i know i always call him chefy too chefy Chefe, are you chefy <laughs> He's such an angry person, though. It's like Hannah, and like he's lucky that Aisha's as nice as she is because yeah. like Hannah and Kate would have ate his ass up. Oh my gosh! Even Daisy, <laughs> Daisy would not do that shit. Yeah, Daisy would be like, "Oh, you, the pizza! You you didn't make that many pizza." <laughs> <laughs> I never heard anyone say pizza before until Below Deck sailing. <laughs> yeah. It's those Aussies. They say some wild, well, the, the the whole like English Commonwealth. They all have like the weirdest ways of pronouncing some words. I love it so much. That's why I love Melbourne right now, which I'm watching on Tubi. It's free. I had no idea. I would have been watching way sooner if I knew, um, but I'm glad that I know now. And I guess there's a bunch of other international housewife franchises on Tubi. Yeah, I I've been watch, I watched Melbourne when it came on Discovery Plus, but I've started watching it on Tubi as well as because I, I just haven't logged into my other TV and Tubi didn't require all that. But um, I digress. Um, but Melbourne is like the main one that I've watched, and I think it is just hilarious. Oh, like so my belly hurts so much after watching that show because I'm just laughing the entire time. The first season, first episode, I'm like, damn, these ladies are already going to a psychic. Yeah. I was like, they're getting into it pretty quick. And then I was like, oh, my God, the psychic is a housewife. Oh, my God. Is, it, is this the first time we've ever had a psychic as a housewife? I know we had Carlton the witch. Carlton the witch? Who's Carlton the witch? Carlton was the witch from Beverly Hills. Oh, I know. Oh, sorry. <laughs> like my dirty yeah. secret. <laughs> she was a witch. She did magic one time. Kyle thought that she did some magic on her because mm. they hated each other. Mama Elsa thought she was a psychic. Yeah. Remember when she had like a psychic off 
like psychic <laughs> standoff with that guy. <laughs> yeah. Like she was not going to allow him to do his thing. She's like, no, no, no. <laughs> took off her shoes, everything. She was like, that was great. I loved it. But um, oh, I saw something today on I think it was on a morning show Ashley Darby went on a morning show and they were like so you she confirmed that she's legally separated from Michael Darby but she confirmed they're still living together like nothing's different really um but she confirmed that everything will be revealed in the show that season cannot get here soon enough. I know right oh and it's gonna gosh. be like probably like six months if they're still filming right now Oh my gosh. I can't wait. Oh, and other news, uh, Nini sued Bravo. That was pretty wild, but wasn't like, expecting not that. much happened after that. Like it happened and I was like, Oh my God. And then it just went away. <laughs> yeah. What's going on. <laughs> I, I feel like we're going to hear more about it later on, but I know that she, as part of like the lawsuit, she was naming like examples of you know Ramona and like Stasi and someone else are like some of the examples that she says like Bravo is like um allowing racism to exist on the network she I mean Stasi called- obviously got fired but she called people out by name yeah I from what I understand she gave them as examples oh snap yeah interesting that'll be interesting um well, speaking of Nini, the Atlanta trailer came out. What did you think about that? I'm really excited for it. I've been dying for Atlanta to come back. I'm excited about the cast. She by Sheree. Like, I love her. She'll always be one of my favorites. I was wondering, where is Sheree? Sheree. Wait, Sheree? Sheree. How do you say Sheree. That? Sheree. I was like, where's Sheree during the trailer? And then... Right at the end, you see like her bottom half walking and you hear hell to the na na na. <laughs> yeah. That's one of my favorite lines of hers. I was dying. I'm like, this is going to be good. And then her tagline. Oh her tagline's my favorite. And I literally said that same line earlier that morning. Not, not the entire <laughs> tagline, but I was telling my friend, I was like, oh yeah. Atlanta's coming back soon. I was like, we're getting she by Sheree, you know, summer, spring, <laughs> September. And then when I saw the tagline, I was like, I was like, I manifested this. That's so great. I love it. I'm excited. So there's been pictures coming out, like glam shots of the whole cast. And the rumor is that the ladies self-funded these pictures and this photo shoot or whatever. And people are talking about it because they're saying it's kind of like a dig at Bravo. What do you think? I heard about that. And I think that's really interesting because it's like the the whole cast had to have agreed to to all collectively do that. So it's like they must all be a little bit mad. Like, yeah, it's weird, right? Like, I hope that we get a little bit of insight into that at some point. Like, I hope that it's like mentioned on Watch What Happens Live or something yeah, like that. Cause I want to know more. what made them feel like I'm guessing, did they not get like a really good cast photo? Was there even a cast photo or did they reuse? I don't know, but that's pretty wild. I don't think we've seen that before, have we? Not that I'm aware of. I wonder, I'm just wondering who took the charge of it. Like who was um, like, no, we're not doing this. I kind of want to do it for BravoCon. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, that'd be so fun. I love that one where they're like pretending to be talking to each other. And then all of a sudden at the same time, they turn and like serve looks. Love yeah, it. I love so it. Good. Yeah, I love it. So that's coming out this weekend, right? Yeah, I'm oh on vacation God. coming up. So I'm like going to stay up and watch my Atlanta and live my best life. Oh my gosh. Get wasty. Get a little bit wasty, (laughs) you know? And and so now we're going to have like more or less like double Atlanta on Sundays because we're going to have candy and the gang and Atlanta. I wonder how long candy and the gang is going to keep airing. Well, then also we have a new show coming out, which I, I don't know much about it, but it's called love match Atlanta. 
that's pre- premiering on May 8th. I don't know anything about it, but I'll probably watch. <laughs> I'll give it a try. I mean, I'm sure it's good. I think watching first dates is pretty funny. Like it's always entertaining to me to see two people see if they like each other. <laughs> so th- then that means we're going to have starting on May 8th, we're going to have Real Housewives of Atlanta, Candy and the Gang and Atlanta yeah. match on the That's same me. night. Yeah, I have a feeling it's going to go Atlanta, Candy and the Gang and then Love Match. Maybe. It's always hard to tell how, like, what they're trying to achieve sometimes yeah. with their show lineup. It's like, is it better to catch the people that were just watching the previous show or yeah. the show before, like, the show after it? Yeah. Like, maybe they'll put Atlanta in the middle of the two to get people to watch oh, both. Little sandwich action. I see what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But then also we have Beverly Hills coming up soon, premiering on May 11th. I'm super excited for that too. I'm really excited for it. I think it's going to be a good season. You know, I'm a little tired of Erica's shit, but. Yeah. I kind of want to see her this season. For some reason, I feel like we're going to enjoy watching her this season. Like she's going to kind of crumble and it's going to be a little bit satisfying. (laughs) Yeah. I, I think you might be right. I mean, She's already definitely like stirring the the feathers with like throwing Garcelle's book in the trash and all of that stuff. So yeah, not good. That's like weird. by the time they get to that reunion, these women are going to be heated. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. So you just started keeping up with the Kardashians recently, right? Yes, I am six seasons in now. Oh, okay. So you know who they are at least like as far as their character goes a little bit even though they've changed a lot over the years um this week on the kardashians well you didn't you're not watching right now right so i haven't watched this week's yet but i've i've been keeping up with it oh okay so um i've been keeping up with the kardashians on hulu (laughs) (laughs) um it was i think I cried like twice watching this week's episode (laughs) because Travis and Courtney really they changed everything for me by seeing them on the show because in social media they were very annoying I'm just like oh what's wrong with you guys but now watching them on the show I kind of am loving them yeah I mean it seems like they're like genuinely like in love yeah and I do want Travis to accept Scott as a brother husband so that they can all live a happy life together. Cause I do like Scott and I don't want to see him like, you know, go down a bad road or like, you know, just be, you know, removed from the family or replaced. Like I want to, I want him to still be a part of it. So yeah. I'm rooting for them. We'll see. But they talk about it in the show. Like, oh, what do you think Scott's going to do? Because Travis is going to propose soon. So they're like, have you talked to Scott? (laughs) (laughs) It's just, oh my gosh, it's too good. I love the Kardashians. Um, But in real current news, the Kardashians and Black China have a lawsuit going on right now that's going through trial right now have you been following that at all i haven't been following that one i mean it's hard enough keeping up with the shows and then there's also like the wild ass like i'm not even really keeping up with the johnny depp and amber heard stuff either me neither but i'm just like getting like the highlights and it's just it's a lot it's so much to even keep up with it is it's so much i can't imagine (laughs) this weekend entertainment news those uh reporters must be really working their butts off um the kardashian verse or black china verse the kardashian one is so weird to me i don't i haven't been following along so i just know like high level but i'm like why would black china even try to go against the kardashians they are like that's like insane that's going against a whole army and not just any army it's like the top army i mean a very like well-funded and well-dressed army yeah like how are you going to try to do that when 
also at the same time, we've seen some things that don't make her look that great. So I just think the whole thing is crazy. I would be so intimidated to see them in the courtroom and know I'm going up against them. Yeah. And be like, I want a hundred million dollars from you. (laughs) (laughs) What? What? I don't even, how does she even rationalize she, that she wants a hundred million dollars? What, what, so what exactly is she suing them over? I don't even know. I think defamation, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of money for defamation. I don't know. Well, how much is, what's the, the Depp versus her thing? Is that, that's a defamation case, right? Yeah, I think so. But that's civil, right? That's not criminal. Yeah, I don't know. See, that's where it gets I messy think. too. Cause I'm like, I don't even know how some of this even real, I think that is also a defamation case, but I'm also like, this is so wild that I don't even know what yeah. the case is about I'm anymore. I'm so confused. Like, I just hear bits and pieces like, oh, she cut his finger off. And then I hear like, oh, then you see him like screaming and yelling. And it's like, what is going on? And then she has a baby, but won't say who the father is. And I'm like, just very confused. Also, Johnny Depp, or outside the courtroom, everyone's screaming and yelling things to what's her name amber heard and then when johnny depp comes out everyone's cheering and like praising him and i'm just so confused and his attitude in the court he's like drawing cartoons and like making jokes and like smiling he's kind of almost acting like willy wonka like that creepy yeah he's being wild yeah he is like it feels very like unhinged and like (laughs) I don't, I don't know. It's like the watching like the messiest divorce play out on television. Yeah. It feels like this is inappropriate for us to be watching. <laughs> I, I feel very uncomfortable. Like there's like shitting in beds. There's you a know, lot going on. Hell? And then, um, all of the yeah, drugs. It, it feels like I'm, we're at dinner with another couple and the other couple is fighting <laughs> and we don't know what to do. We're just like, yeah, exactly. It's like watching Ryan and Jennifer. Oh my gosh. But on a much bigger scale. <laughs> so um, have you watched Selling Sunset? Do you watch that? Um, so I watched the last season. I'm not 100% sure if I'm still into it. I used to yeah. love it, but I, I've, I've heard that, that it just is getting to feel a little bit too scripted. Yeah, well, Christine Quinn who's like one of the main characters, she tweeted like, oh, can't wait to, can't, can't wait for the premiere and all of its fake storylines or something. And it's like, it does feel fake, but we kind of know that it's fake, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, still watch it I, I think like that it. with like a lot of reality TV, but it's like at some point, like it's like just feels too fake. It feels very like Laguna Beach Hills fake-ish. Yeah, I definitely, definitely gives some like Hills vibes. Yeah. Well, I watched the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I like watching it because I like watching their glam and I like watching the houses, but I don't know what's real or not. I just, I'm just there. I'm more excited for um, Bling Empire. That's coming out on the 13th. <gasps> yes. Oh my gosh. I can't wait for Bling Empire. I love that show. I am so obsessed with them. They're so rich. Like the way they spend money, the way they dress. I, I love every minute of it. I know. What would you do though if you were friends with them? Like that, what's his name? Um, Kevin. Kevin, yeah. If you were Kevin, obviously- he can't keep up with them financially. How would you feel hanging out with super, super rich people like that? I don't know. I feel like, well, it's also, they're, they're just like so wealthy. Like yeah. their families are like billionaire families, not just like They wear like millionaire million, families. million dollars worth of jewels on their bodies. Like yeah. right out. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I guess like, good luck on you if you're like getting to like ride sort of like with them because I just like you but it's like I feel like you're definitely always like you know I, I think that they sort of made fun of him a couple of times for like what is that the only shirt you have like in the first season because he had like one 
like Armani shirt or something that he was like wearing like two or three times. And they're like, yeah. you need to get some more clothes, dude. That's so awkward. I mean, I don't know. It's tough to hang out with people who are in different financial brackets. Than you, I guess. Uh, yeah. Especially like when it's like that different. Yeah. It feels weird. But, but his story is also interesting because I mean, he's like adopted and he has like white parents. So he also like, mm-hmm is like, you know, the, the world that he's in is like so unfamiliar to him in like a couple different ways. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting. I love that show. I do too. Did you watch, um, the Abercrombie documentary? I didn't. I've been busy watching, um, the way down. Have you heard of that on HBO? Way down. Mm -mm. It's, It's a church, um, in like Tennessee. It's run by a woman named Gwen Shamblin. And it's like way down is like weighing yourself and your weight, like, you know, going down the whole church is like based off of like eating and they're more or less, they're more or less encouraging like eating disorders because they'll be like, you can only have this many bites of food a day. Like if you feel hungry, you should go read the Bible. If you feel hungry, go pray. Like it's like a cult. You'll have to look it up. It's on HBO max. It's called like the way down. You know, something. I love a cult and the lady's hair is like, <laughs> it starts out like just sort of like a regular, like blowout, but like by the time, like the show ends, like her hair is like this tall. <laughs> Wait, because she was sitting there for so long. No, because she like, as she got older, she'd tease her hair out more and it, it got oh. higher and higher. You'll have to Google her Gwen Shamblin, <laughs> but the documentary is super interesting. And it's really crazy because I didn't know who they were, but I had remembered in like 2020 hearing about a plane crash and like her and her husband, like all these other members of the church, like of the leadership of the church died. It was like a little small, like jet, a private jet. So, and it just gets even more twisted after they die. Like the power dynamics of the church. Yeah, it's a documentary. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, I have another show that I started up. Um, I don't, is it on HBO? I don't know. The flight attendant. Have you seen that? I haven't seen that, but that is on HBO. It's the first season was so good. I wasn't, I only watched because everyone was talking about it. I was like, whatever, fine. And then I was hooked right away. Cause I love murder. And yeah. <laughs> I was like, yes. So Sean and I, my husband, we binged it like in one day. And so the second season just came out. Actually, there's probably new episodes out right now. Um, but I watched the first two and I was a little bit worried because I didn't think like, how could they make the second season nearly as good as the first season? And already they're doing a really good job. So I'm going to keep watching it and I'm excited about it. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. And I've been wanting to watch the um, Abercrombie documentary too. Is that one pretty good? So the only reason, I mean, it's okay. The only reason I was so into it and looking forward to it is because I was recruited on campus for Abercrombie and went to their headquarters in Ohio and took a tour, met the CEO, had dinner with them. They were like, I think I drank with one of the guys who's in the documentary. Like I, he feels very familiar. I don't, I don't remember. This was like 2004, but um, yeah. And my husband, Sean, he went there too and had the same experience, but a different year. And the whole thing with Abercrombie is that they were like racist. They didn't like, you know, the, they only wanted skinny people and stuff like that. And so Sean, you know, Sean, he's a little wild sometimes. Yeah. He was at the onsite interview and the CEO comes down for lunch with everybody and like does a little speech and then does a Q&A. And I didn't ask anything when I was there. I was like, I'm not asking anything. <laughs> but Sean, of course, being the way he is, he asked a question. And essentially when he, when he repeated the question that he asked the CEO, I was like, you basically asked the CEO of Abercrombie and Fitch why he hates fat people. 
Oh my God. I can see him doing that though. <laughs> like he didn't say it that way, but he basically said, why do you hate fat people? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've heard a lot of different horror stories and it's funny because my husband actually worked at Abercrombie and like when he was in high school, like whatever, whatever the kids version was. I have Abercrombie kids. Yeah, I guess. I don't know what it was <laughs> called. Yeah, I think it might have just been Abercrombie kids. Well, what else? So what do you have going on? Um, right now, you know, I'm just focusing on um, getting the Bravo Critics podcast to continue going still okay. doing our little Roni rewatch. We just did season four and um, we actually just interviewed Dorinda Medley. Ooh. So, yeah, we're dropping her episode probably early May. So that's going to be really exciting. She was so funny. Love she's her. Funny. I could talk to her for hours. Yeah, she seems like somebody you could just chill with. Yeah, and I mean, she's such a talker herself too that it's like, you almost forget that like you're like in an interview situation because she just yeah. wants to like tell yeah. like her entire life story. It's like, okay, I've read your book, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I have her book. I haven't read it yet. Was it, it good? It's pretty good. It's, it's, it's interesting. And um, yeah, so everyone will have to listen to that. Bravo Critics. You can be, we can be found on any podcast platform. Awesome. And you're on Instagram? On Instagram at that Bravo gay. Yay. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, it was so much fun. Keep blazing, Jenny. Blazing. Show your support by making sure to subscribe, like, review, share, turn on notifications, all that great stuff.